For Ukrainian Canadians, 1.3 million, looking for every bit of information on what is happening in their country, in the homeland, including looking to Ukrainian journalism, media outlets for facts. How fortunate, Natalie Collada, to have you with us this morning. What you might not know is Natalie Collada is part of that family background, Ukrainian, speaks the language, and is going to help us uh, understand. We were just talking with Bogdan from uh, the Kiev Post, fantastic uh, editor there, and he gave us information really corroborating a lot of the things that we're hearing reports of, but his correspondence bringing us direct facts from the ground. You've been looking through various sources, Ukrainian sources and papers, etc. What are you reading and hearing? It's really interesting, um, Heather, because many people in Ukraine actually speak Russia, Russian, pardon me, um, not Ukrainian. So but a lot of media is in both languages. So sorting through that can be a bit tricky, but we have been scoring the local papers and bringing you some of what we're seeing. So we're going to start with this. This is from Lviv, and what it talks about is an article depicting where people can donate blood. It's speaking specifically about the increased need for supplies for the wounded and listing where you can go within uh, that particular p particular location. Another uh, article we'll bring up for you here speaks about residents, um, particularly on the front line, where they are, talking about where they are within this conflict and how they're handling it. It talks about high tension um, in the areas, how they've heard shots at night and every morning waking up to it, speaking um, about one uh, village in particular where several homes were damaged from shelling, where one woman was hiding in the furthest room from her ho from in her house as the shots were fired outside. And when, there's another article I'm going to bring up for you here, and this is interesting. It talks a bit about how people in shell shock c can help others. It speaks uh, with an Israeli uh, um, instructor from Haifa who talks about establishing connections. So saying something like to someone, like my name is Natalie. What's your name? Um, I'm here. We're together. It says finish. This is done. Um, you know, and then repeating what happened and what needs to be done from there. You know, a rocket has been hit nearby. We are sitting on the street. We need to get shelter. And it's interesting, Heather, because as we heard from the editor there from the Kiev Post, this is very much a surprise for many people in Ukraine who didn't really believe um, that this would happen. I, I was speaking with my aunt and my cousins who are there just on Wednesday and, and when all the ramp up was happening, they didn't really believe that Putin would actually do this. And then here we are now, so dealing with that as it is. So that is exactly what I was going to ask you, whether you had direct family connections to people who are in the midst of this crisis right now. Are they okay, Natalie? Well, uh, we hope so. Uh, yesterday, like for many uh, Ukrainian Canadians, was very difficult. I had family who were hiding in bomb shelters, so we didn't hear from them. Um, however, that being said, we know that many people within Canada right now watching what's happening very closely. Have a listen. We are talking about how we can help our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. That our culture, our country gets stripped away from us, like our identity basically. <laughs> That's the biggest fear. My 55 year old dad can take uh, like actual weapons and stand up for, the, for my city, for my country. I think everyone else can do at least something, just like get out, get outside, go, go on a rally, say you're against this. So you can see there very clearly, Heather, the pain on many Ukrainian Canadians' faces as they watch what's happening with family and loved ones still in Ukraine, and they're here. Natalie, thank you uh, for all of that very particular insight and great context for us as we understand this day, too. Natalie Collada on CBC News Network.